Hello there, and today we're going to be painting up this mask, this uh, black mask, plastic mask, and uh, bought this off of Amazon or eBay, I can't remember which one, but you can get them off of both. It's uh, classed as an airsoft mask, so I presume that's paintballing. I have done paintballing once upon a time, but uh, in this video we're making a mask for a electronic musician uh, called Cypher Zero. And uh, this is the upgraded version, so if you want to check out Cypher Zero Music, you can check Cypher Zero Music out on YouTube, Spotify. So just type in Cypher, Cypher Zero. I'll put the uh, details in the description below anyway. So that's Cypher Zero or Cypher Zero Music, and uh, you'll see Cypher Zero pop up on uh, various social media platforms, including YouTube, Spotify, like I say. Um, this is an upgrade. So the concept behind Cypher Zero is he regenerate, regenerates, or it regenerates, uh, probably every year when he releases a new album. So anyway, so uh, yeah, we'll get on to what we're doing here. So we're just taking out the lenses there, as you can see. And we're just going to prepare the mask ready for painting. So these masks, I mean, I, I like this mask, personally speaking. And um, it was relatively cheap uh, from eBay or Amazon. Like I say, I forget which, which website. So, so what we're going to do here first is prime it. I'm priming it with some white primer here, but in hindsight, perhaps I should have used um, grey. The halfway between colour. Because I kind of sort of chopped and changed my mind a little bit, but I sort of had a colour scheme in my head. Which is to use yellow, so I'm using some ye ye uh, yellow Revel model paint there, as you can see. And I want to combine that with a kind of silver or even um, cast iron looking effect. I was going to paint the metallic parts in a cast iron so it's more black more like a silvery black but i did lighten up those areas you will see as you will see uh, further on in the video so there are you can see there i'm just uh, lay, uh putting a layer of uh, model paint down yellow so that's a matte yellow and like i say of the revel by revel for like uh, everyday sort of uh, model kits Revel model kits and Airfix and all that type of thing. <clears throat> you could use spray paint, tape things out, but I sort of using what I've got about the place. You probably get a smoother finish with uh, spray paint, of course. But these paints are pretty good. We're going for a kind of worn look, Danny, a worn metallic look. So the the yellow there will make a worn effect, as if like parts of the paint's chipped away, and you can see like the metallic. <clears throat> surface underneath and probably as the year goes through with cypher okay. zero uh they'll probably add some more effects also we can add some lights to this mask as well so you, you can see the vents in the mask there on the left left hand and the right hand side those slits we'll put some leds behind there and some kind of opaque material to kind of diffuse the light spread it out a little bit i went over the whole mask there um just for the sheer hell of it <clears throat> it was easy to do, plus you got a second coat on the main parts, which we're going to keep as yellow. So now I've mixed up a combination of a cast iron metallic effect paint with a silver metallic effect paint. I just wanted the, uh, the cast iron, the darkness of the cast iron, just to be a little bit lighter. And then towards the end of the video, we'll dry brush some lighter silver over the top of the cast iron, the lightened cast iron to create a kind of worn look. I'm going for that kind of cyberpunk look with the mask. So like I say, Cypher Zero is an electronic outfit, although sort of like the next album is going to be... Cypher Zero has already done, already done an album, 2022. Mainly sort of electronic, new disco, industrial some guitars. There's going to be more guitars in the second album. Um, so there's going to be a combination of kind of electronic and uh, heavy guitars, rock guitars, maybe funk guitars as well. So we pulled off those kind of those little tubey things on the side of the mask. It's sort of air, air pipe things. And we're just painting over those while they're detached with the same colour as what we're painting part of the mask with the uh, cast iron silver effect so I put a few coats on with both colored paints the yellow and the metallic paints 
and two, you get like a, you know, you're aiming for like, like a nice solid color with no brush marks. So you can see the brush marks. You can still see the brush marks there, of course. <clears throat> so I've got a small detailed brush to get into those nooks and crannies. I've got a bit of a shake on my hand. I was watching somebody paint, paint some models the other day and they said, whatever you do, don't hold your breath. I've gotten to such a habit when I'm painting, I hold my breath. And of course, you're not relaxing when you hold your breath. But I do have a little bit of a shake. The eyes aren't so good anymore. I'm a bit of an old fart now, so I'm, I'm going to be 50 next month, which is... Oh. Uh, that'll be on the March the 26th, 2023, as it is at this moment, 2023. So you see there, like, the uh, the metallic parts are a little bit uh, patchy, so we just build it. Just, I, I tend to put a coat on, wait for a night so it sets off nicely, and then put another coat of paint on the next day, and that applies with the, the yellow and the metallic paint. You'll probably get away with... Uh, get two or three coats in the same day but I like to just do a coat forget about it and then you know that the uh, paint is ready for the next day and you're not going to get any problems with wiping the paint the previous coat layer off if you know what I mean so um, yeah where my hand isn't so good these days uh, with doing following a straight line it's, it's not gonna be too bad because we're gonna create a worn effect we're gonna put a wash over the yellow we're also gonna put a wash over the metallic area and that'll kind of blend things in and sort of disguise those wonky lines if you like if you want to keep it crisp and clear you might want to if you've got a hand like mine you might want to tape things out but as we're using like a worn effect it's not going to cause too much of a problem which is handy with making models, you know, like Airfix models, Revel models, and all that type of thing. If you're doing like a worn effect and you're putting a wash over it, um, if you haven't painted the undercoat in, or like areas where you need a a straight edge or something like that, the uh, it can be quite forgiving when you put the wash on. But if you want like that clean look, <clears throat> then obviously you need to spend a bit more time on those details and prepare a little bit better maybe using masking and stuff like that some people got very still hands and they can you know paint in those uh, straight lines um, I used to be a little bit better at it, I think getting older maybe I don't know perhaps I blame an age I don't know bad works and blames his tools and all that type of thing that type of attitude I don't know <clears throat> but probably in the future I probably use if I was to keep it like say like the mask now if I were to keep it like that I'd probably tape things out Anyway, so what I'm doing here is I've mixed up a, I've added some white to the yellow to uh, make a lighter yellow and we're just dry brushing some highlights onto the mask just to make it pop a little bit more, make it look a little bit more worn as well. So like with the dry brush and tape, and also there, where, where you like might put a bit of paint on where you don't want it, like there I've just put a bit of yellow paint on the metallic part, just get a, a wet paint brush and just wipe that yellow off. If it doesn't come off, you can just touch it up, touch it up again with the appropriate colour, or same colour that you've put down. <clears throat> so there we are. Yeah, just put those highlights on and let that dry. We're also going to use a knife a little bit later on and scrape away at the paint to kind of create a kind of authentic, worn look. Also, and even sort of scrape back in little areas where it looks like little chips have come off so you chip a little bit of the paint off we can paint in a little bit of uh, silver to make it look like there's a silver metallic paint underneath the the yellow area which i think looks pretty effective so just touching up there with the metallic paint we've got the highlights there on the the yellow we're gonna be ready to put a wash down at some point but first we're going to mix some Silver in with more silver in with the uh, darker uh, metallic paint, the cast iron paint, and um, we're just gonna lighten it up. And you can see there, I'm just uh, thinning the paint out on the cardboard, and then applying a dry brush to the top of the original layer of metallic paint, which is a little bit darker. So you get like those nice highlights on the metal. 
it kind of makes out the raised areas pop out a little bit more. You can see some kind of like rivet type things on the mask. So now we're like reattaching those pipes, the breathing pipes on the side of the mask there. And we want to tidy that up as well because a little bit of the paint came off, kind of cracked and flaked. But I used a cocktail stick to just tidy that up a little bit. Also, like because we want that worn, worn effect, it doesn't matter if it's a little bit scruffy. It kind of adds to the effect. And there we are, just touching it with a bit of paint there around those edges. Make sure those uh, pipes are fitted in nicely. And then we'll continue just dry brushing and bringing out those details on the pipe with, along with the rest of the mask, or the metallic parts of the mask at this stage. And th this is how I did the mask. You might, uh, I probably, might, I did have a, a little bit of a problem. Um, and that might have been down to the choice of primer. So I used a spray paint, as you can see at the beginning, which is like an automotive paint. Um, in one area, it did actually chip off. I was quite happy with that because it did add, add to the effect. But if you don't want that, you might have to think about priming with something different. Or it might have just been a freak um, mistake as it was all right in other areas. Perhaps there's a little bit of oil on that mask. So you want to clean your mask. Really, I didn't clean my mask before applying the uh, colours. So it might be an idea to just wash your mask or whatever you're painting with some soapy water. And let it dry, of course, before you commence painting. So I tried out a wash there. So I'm using like a, a brown wash. I think it's like a brown sienna. And the washes are from a Vallejo paint pack. I bought a load of Vallejo paints or Vallejo paints um, for some miniatures, funny enough. Some Warhammer stuff. I'm not, so, I'm not really much into Warhammer gaming. But I like to buy the old figure for a little bit of practice. Uh, they might be too small for my eyes these days, but um, I will put a video up of one of the uh, Space Marines that I bought recently. A little bit of a nostalgia buzz because I used to like uh, painting them when I was younger. But like I say, I'm not, I wasn't really a gamer. I like Dungeons and Dragons, but again, I wasn't into the games. I was more into the figures and the art, really. <clears throat> so anyway, there we are. We're um, applying the washes there. Or the wash, a brown sienna colour. And we just let that dry. I let that dry overnight also. And I built up about three layers, I think, uh, to the effect that I wanted. So if you're doing it, um, just obviously build up your washes to the effect that you want. Wash the, These wash paints probably aren't designed for a bigger surface like this mask and are designed for, um, you know, like small figurines, like the Citadel figurines and the Warhammer fig figurines. But um, it kind of turned out okay after a few layers on this mask. I probably uh, would have benefited using a bigger brush than what I was using there, really. But there we are. But it still, it turned out okay. So you can see they just built out the layers. That's dried. And now we're going to put a blue wash. And again, that's a Vallejo paint, or Vallejo. I think it's, I think it's pronounced Vallejo, isn't it? Vallejo, probably. It's a Spanish name, isn't it? Boris Vallejo, Vallejo, of course. The famous artist. I used to love seeing his pictures when I was younger. His pictures were all over the place in the 80s. Of course, he did a lot of uh, album covers and all, kind of, all kinds of fantasy art. Amazing artist. As most of us will know. Or all of us will know watching this video. So there we are, putting the blue wash in. Same, same again like we did on the, uh, the yellow with the brown wash. Just using a small, small brush there just to get into the details, but I do use a bigger brush as well. And we do the same again, just wait for that to dry. So that I can't, I, I, it probably, you probably can't see it so much on the video. But I think that blue tint does add to the effect. And sort of uh, gives off a kind of glowing, uh, a subtle glowing hue to the uh, metallic effect on the mask. So just pretty much uh, rinse and repeat here so just again like we just put another coat of uh brown there i thought that's blue it looked blue when i'm looking at the video as i'm looking at the video here so i thought that was for the metallic part but no it's brown for the yellow part of the mask so again we're just just going through quick there another coat i think we're there with the brown and maybe another coat on another wash coat for the metallic 
area. Just using a little brush there because it did collect, sort of pull up in areas. I just wanted to get rid of some of that excess paint. So go through every stage here. Um, each stage that I repeat, just go through it quicker because we're, we're um, obviously familiar with that already. And uh, that's all the paint done now. All the paint coats, all the washes finished. And as you can see, I'm just using a knife there just to add in some extra detail, scrape away some of the paint and kind of chip it in some areas. Not too much. I just want a few chips here and there and just scraping away on the paint to reveal some of the pure yellow underneath and I think that gives a nice look along with those chips so I want to give the the the, uh, the mask a little bit of a character so it looks like it's been through some action Cypher Zero likes to travel around the universe collect tunes and inspiration for his music kind of Outer Traveller and Inner Traveller. So Cypher Zero version 2. There is another mask on this channel, his, his original mask, uh, which is just a gas mask. And that had LED lights in it. That's, there's a video there. A full length video with a paint job and installing LED lights into the mask, into the gas mask. And you'll see what Cypher Zero looked like in his first incarnation which is also featured on some of his singles, single covers and album cover. The first album, which was last year, and the second album coming out this year with version two, which will feature this mask. So if you, I'm using some uh, Scarum pads there, as you can see. Just uh, your everyday um, dishwashing Scarum pads. I was going to say Brillo pad. That's a brand name, completely different. I've only started using these uh, Scarum pad things. They're great. Cheap, cheerful, great for pots and pans. So I'm sure everybody's familiar with these uh, scouring pads. Just kind of like coils of um, shaved metal. Metal shavings, I suppose. But also like coiled into one neat ball. And yeah, the, these worked out great for giving that worn look on top of this paint. As you can see there. So everything's coming together. Just using a dry brush there. You might see me use that earlier on just to get any dust off. When we're doing that kind of thing, scraping the paint away. And I'm putting another wash down there, just on the metallic part, as you can see, just to bring that those blues out a little bit more. Sink into the crevices. Kind of hide those uh, the, where, where the, uh, the paint jobs meet up where the metallic meets up with the the yellow mat. So like the grime, if you like, kind of sinks into those nooks and crannies. So looking pretty good so far, I think. <clears throat> We just let that dry. Add some more touches. So there I've got like a small brush and I'm just adding where we scrape the paint away. Just and also actually on top of some of the, the paint on the edges, we're just adding some light silver. And 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 a combination where the where the bigger uh, chips are taken away we're adding adding that sort of closer to the dark um cast iron effect and then on top of that a little bit of silver to create that worn look and revealing the metallic or metal underneath the metal effect and like i say going along those edges it's kind of worn away and it gives a good i think it gives a very authentic metallic look and worn look of course which is what we're aiming for on this mask in this video. You don't want to overdo it. So you can see there, I just put like maybe a little globular paint there. 
and uh, maybe in some areas it might might want um, a few layers, coats if you like, so it sticks out along those edges. And that kind of sets the whole thing off. And then we're just using some dry brushing there just to bring those details out, details out on the uh, metallic areas. And once once we finished here, I don't show it in the video, but uh, once the once everything's painted and dried, leave it a day or two. Um, I put some lacquer on, and here's another thing as well. I did use matte lacquer, and uh, that was automotive matte lacquer, and it did kind of dull the co colours a little bit. So I did have to put some metallic paint over the top of the lacquer as well. So maybe. The automotive uh, lacquer isn't a wise choice. <clears throat> so I might have to sort out some other kind of lacquer to put on any future projects like this. I know sometimes if you've got too much moisture, or if the moisture hasn't evaporated enough, because you want it totally bone dry, that can kind of um, mist up your paintwork. It looks misty. I've made the mistake once upon a time years ago. Um, I did a frame, did a paint job on a frame, <clears throat> similar sort of thing, like a to get a metallic look. And I did it outside, and it started to spot with rain. And you can see those spots; they come out. It looks like white paint on lacquer. So that was uh, uh, very irritating. Luckily, the person it was for, she liked the effect. So that was a stroke of luck. So there we are, job done. And that's the mask finished after a lacquer. So uh, once that's done, we can put everything back together, put the eyes back in. And like I say, we'll, I will be putting some LED lights into this mask to give it a cool finish to shine through the vents on either side of the mask, like its cheek areas. And we'll... Uh, once I do that, I will put a video up of installing the lights. And like I say, the original mask, you can see um, how I installed the lights in that using a 9 volt battery. And I think it was six LEDs, I think. We're going to use four LEDs in this, so we might not use a 9 volt battery. We'll see what we need. Anyway, job done there. Cypher Zero version 2 mask. Like I say, go and check them out if you want to, if you're into electronic music. It's kind of synth wave. Electro punk and other things, retro perhaps. So there we are. Hope that helped. Hope the video helps, and we will see you soon. Thanks for watching, and over and out for now. <laughs>